Hey food enthusiasts, welcome to the Culinary Timeline channel, where we set out together on a journey through culinary traditions, discovering timeless recipes and unraveling the science and history behind the flavors. Today, we're embarking on a culinary journey like no other, and we have a very exciting and intriguing episode for you. Get ready to delve into the intriguing world that we call Feasting with Dictators, their favorite foods revealed. Let's take you into the world of history and politics to uncover the favorite foods of some of the most infamous dictators in history. Yes, you heard that right. We're going to explore the palettes of two iconic leaders, Benito Mussolini and Fidel Castro. Dictators known for their absolute power and controversial rule had tastes that extended beyond the political realm and into the realm of gastronomy. Join us as we uncover the culinary secrets of these formidable figures. So. Let's jump right in. Our first dictator on the menu today, from the other side of the world, takes us to the vibrant and revolutionary Cuba, Fidel Castro. The iconic Cuban revolutionary and leader had a taste for simplicity and local flavors. Castro's love for food was well known, and he had a penchant for hearty, traditional Cuban cuisine. Guys, You'll be amazed that one of the favorite dishes of Castro was a suckling pig, one that is fed on nothing but its mother's milk. The carcass is gutted with the head, skin, and tail left on, marinated for 24 hours in a sauce of orange juice, flavored with olive oil, chopped parsley, crushed garlic, and demi-glace, which is a thick stock. The meat is roasted on a gridiron for two hours, first at 150 degrees, increasing to 180 then basted with lard to make the skin turn to crackling. It was served with plantains or cooked bananas. Sounds amazing and perhaps a little bit different, yet it was very much liked by the Cuban dictator. And while suckling pig remained one of his favorite meals, he was also obsessed with ice cream and could eat up to 20 scoops a day. According to dailymail.co.uk, Fidel Castro ate 20 scoops of ice cream a day. Just think of the brain freeze. Ever heard the saying, I scream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream? This phrase is undoubtedly suitable for Castro as he was obsessed with ice cream and other dairy products. He was fond of milk and all kinds of dairy in such a manner that every meal of Castro's had a variety of ice creams, shakes, and milky products. Another of his all-time favorites was Ropa Vieja, a hearty and slow-cooked shredded beef stew. Ropa Vieja means old clothes in Spanish a dish that reflects the resourcefulness and resilience of the Cuban people. It's a delicious, flavorful, tender shredded beef stew, cooked with tomatoes, peppers, onions, and a blend of aromatic spices. Legend has it that Castro loved this dish so much that he would often invite foreign dignitaries to try it. This traditional Cuban comfort food became a symbol of the revolution and Cuban spirit. It's a dish that symbolizes unity, strength, and the ability to make the most out of what you have. Simple ingredients, but a powerful statement. He was also known to often demand the unusual spaghetti salad made from baby eels called elvers, which were unique and very hard to find. Castro, who also enjoyed cooking, liked Fernandez's vegetable soup. He also loved good wine, but there were other specific items too, ironically from America, that were regular additions in his diet. The olives, meats, and cheeses imported from the United States were some of the things Castro loved to feast on. Interestingly, Castro also loved one vegetable from India very much. The drumstick was actually cultivated by him at his Moringa farm. He reportedly got the seeds from Kerala and Tamil Nadu, as he stated it had medicinal properties. Now, let's fast forward to our next dictator from our second stop, Italy, where we will unravel the culinary preferences of the charismatic fascist dictator Benito Mussolini, the controversial leader of Italy during World War II. Mussolini had a larger-than-life persona, and his culinary preferences were just as extravagant. Despite his fascist regime, Mussolini enjoyed the finer things in life, and food was no exception. Mussolini, the man who once said, one who does not eat does not work, had an appetite for the finer things in life, and one of his favorite dishes was a classic Italian pasta spaghetti alla carbonara. Spaghetti alla carbonara is a delectable combination of pasta, eggs, cheese, pancetta, and black pepper, and is just about the most Italian thing you could imagine. It's a dish that exudes richness and indulgence, much like the dictator himself. Mussolini would often invite guests for lavish meals where spaghetti alla carbonara would take center stage. 
It's fascinating how even dictators have a weakness for comfort food. Risotto con nero di sepia. Risotto with cuttlefish ink. Another recipe liked by Mussolini. The jet black risotto, symbolizing power and authority, was a frequent guest at Mussolini's table. The rich, briny flavor of cuttlefish ink mixed with the creamy texture of Aborio rice created a dish fit for a dictator. As quoted by one of his chefs in an interview with IBTimes.com, Mussolini's choice was unconventional, but it reflected his desire for opulence and a strong, assertive taste. The risotto con nero di sepia was a reflection of the man himself, bold and unapologetic. Mussolini also loved a simple salad of roughly chopped garlic drenched with oil and fresh lemon juice. Other favorite dishes included brodetto di pesce, Adriatic style seafood stew, garlic sauteed shrimp, ribolita soup, bolognese sauce, risi ibisi, which is Italian rice and peas, and a tomato basil soup with herbed focaccia croutons. These traditional recipes were very much liked by the dictator and mostly served upon his request brought to the table for him again and again, as he liked them so much that he often kept demanding more from the menu. Interestingly, we're all well aware of the famous Italian cuisine, having been passed down through the centuries and fulfilling the tastes and desires of the people for many years. Mussolini too was well aware of the whole Italian food era and proudly promoted the entire menu of famous traditional Italian recipes by serving them to guests from all over the world and getting his guests well acquainted with the Italian flavors. And there's no doubt that those flavors are some of the tastiest in the world and are held to a tremendously high mark. These dishes leave a memorable and authentic name in the world of taste and unique recipes. Guys, it has to be said, Discussing the favorite food of these dictators is fascinating, but it's important to remember for all of us the gravity of their actions and the suffering they cause. However, this unique lens into their culinary preferences humanizes them in a way, reminding us that even the most notorious figures in history had their own personal tastes and preferences. It's fascinating to see how the culinary choices of these dictators mirrored their personalities and the times they lived in. From the bold and extravagant risotto con nero di sepia to the humble yet hearty ropa vieja, food became a symbolic expression of their reigns. You might now be wondering, what do these preferences tell us about their leadership styles and the cultures they governed? Well, it's clearly visible that Mussolini's choices reflect his desire for dominance and extravagance, while Castro's preference for a humble dish like the ropa vieja show his connection with the Cuban people. No doubt that food and feasts have always been powerful tools for leaders to connect with their followers, and food has always been a way of connecting people, transcending borders and politics. It's a universal language that speaks to our shared humanity. So, as we revealed the gastronomic world of dictators, let's also remember the power of food to unite and bring joy. Mussolini and Castro used it to convey messages of strength, resilience, and unity. So there you have it, folks. Feasting with dictators, their favorite foods revealed. We have explored the culinary world of Mussolini and Castro, discovering how their taste buds influenced their leadership styles. So if you enjoyed this unique journey through history, please don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe for more intriguing content, and let us know in the comments below which dictator's culinary journey you would like us to explore next. Until next time, stay hungry for knowledge and keep exploring the fascinating stories behind the food we eat. Until then, happy feasting everyone.